This week we're colour grading three different shots and each one in just five minutes. I'll talk you through my thought process and fast forward through the boring bits so this video doesn't get too long. But before we get into it, the software I'm using is Final Cut Pro, but you can do this stuff on any software. And I'm also using the plugin Film Convert, who are this week's sponsor, but as usual, they haven't told me what to say and they haven't seen this video before it was uploaded. So let's set the clock for five minutes. So I usually start by bringing in Film Convert to give us a base grade to start with. I'll choose the camera that I shot on and the picture profile that I used. From here, I'll reduce the film color so that it's not as intense and dial back the contrast a bit with the curve setting. At this point, my main focus is on the roll off between the darker and the lighter parts of the image. So I'll just drop the exposure a little bit and now that's a good starting point. Next, I'll put a black solid on top of the footage and mask it to the size of her face so we can isolate different parts of the frame. For now, we'll drag it over to something white or gray like the wall and look at our vector scope. You can see it's pushing slightly towards yellow, so let's cool down the temperature of the image until it's close to the middle, meaning the wall is white. Now going back to look at the whole image, let's add a color effect and use it to brighten the image a bit, but really we should check our waveform for this. So let's open that and you can see the dark parts are at the bottom and the brightest parts of the image are at the top. I usually adjust my highlights until they're sitting around 75 on the waveform and then have the shadows just barely above zero. After that, I'll use the midtones to control whether I want a light or a dark look. And to me, this is now feeling a little bit too crunchy, so I'll just boost the shadows slightly. Next is the color. I remember the wall was a little bit too green, so I'm gonna add some magenta into the highlights. And then I'll counter that, go the opposite way with some green in the midtones. Clearly the walls are too pink now, so let's use that black mask again, but this time we'll isolate just the skin tones. Now when we switch over to the vector scope, we can see how the color is pushing away towards magenta, which is what we expected. So let's bring those highlights back down until the skin tones are sitting on that diagonal line, which is our skin tone indicator. I use it all the time to make sure that the skin isn't too red or too green. Looking at the whole image again, I think that those greens in the midtones are probably cooling off some of the darker parts of the image a bit too much. So let's add some red to the shadows to counter that, but only just a touch. And then because we've changed the color, we'll need to check our skin tones again and just pull them slightly back away from red. And there we go, next is saturation. In general, I find that boosting the color in the shadows, it has a really nice filmic quality. But when you boost the saturation in the highlights, it looks a bit weird. So I usually boost the shadows a bit and drop the highlights slightly. Then we're done with saturation. The last few things are to choose Super 35 for our grain and reduce it down to 70, which I found to be the right amount to just dirty up the image so it doesn't look quite so clinical. With time running out, let's add our final touch, which is a vignette, where we add a second correction and this time with a round mask. Then we'll basically just darken what's outside of it to draw the audience's eyes into the middle of the frame. We could just drop the highlights like this, but I think that looks really fake and horrible. So I prefer to drop the midtones instead. Then I'll just toggle it on and off a couple of times to see what it's doing and see if it's too intense. And I usually end up tweaking it slightly and then going back again to check the before and afters. And that's all I could manage in five minutes. So here's what we started with and here's what it looked like five minutes later. Now for this next shot, I thought I'd try matching the color between two different shots, which is a really useful skill when you've got to blend different cameras into the same project or deal with lighting changes and different camera settings, but still try and make it all look like one cohesive piece. So let's try grading some DSLR footage to match with some 8K raw footage that was filmed on the Red Epic W. Let's start the timer. Now my favorite way to match shots is by putting them side by side. So I'll move this over and crop the left so we can compare them easily. Then we'll add film convert and choose the camera and the profile just like last time. Now here, definitely too much contrast. So let's dial back the curve setting. This time I'll choose a different film stock, the same one I used with the red footage. Let's reduce the film color slightly and then drop the exposure, looking at the walls in the background to see that they match. But we can be more precise than that. If we crop just the faces, then our waveform shows her hair and her face here, which makes it really easy to compare. So we'll start by boosting the highlights until they're the same height on the waveform. And then we can tweak the shadows and the mids until her hair matches too. 
before going back to the highlights and making those match again. Next, let's get rid of those crops and look at color. It's pretty clear that the image on the right is too green, so let's add the opposite, taking the highlights up towards purple magenta and a tiny bit in the midtones too, which will then counter by taking away a tiny bit in the shadows so her hair isn't too blue. Let's have a quick check of before and after, and then we'll put the shots one after another for the final touches. Now, I was running out of time, but I decided to quickly add a bit more magenta to the mids and warm up the temperature slightly before doing our saturation trick since the reds colors felt a bit richer. The last thing is to choose Super 35 grain and drop it down to 70, and then we ran out of time. Now, I'll admit they're not perfectly matched, but it's certainly a big improvement considering it only took five minutes. And let's start the timer once more for our third and final shot. So again, we'll add film convert, choose the camera and go straight for my favorite film stock. This time it's looking pretty bright. So let's drop the exposure a little bit and bring the contrast way, way down, which looks decent, but a little bit too saturated. So let's reduce the film color slightly. While we're here, let's sort out our film grain, just the same as before. And then because this shot is going on YouTube, I like to kind of simulate that experience by adding a white solid with a mask to see what it would look like when it's surrounded by a white website. Although it looked fine before, I think the white outline kind of reveals how dark and flat the image would look on most web pages. So let's fix that. I'll try increasing the contrast, but that doesn't help much. And when I try and brighten the image, the whole thing kind of just washes out. So let's pause this for a second. Now it's pretty standard when you're shooting to use a flat picture profile or log. It's what all the pros do, basically shooting on a less contrasty image to give you the most flexibility when you're color grading. So I use them too, but sometimes flat footage can be a little bit difficult to grade. So what I've started doing recently is just right before I'm about to film, I'll quickly switch over to a non-flat profile, just a standard one with all the regular contrast, and just record a short clip that I can then use alongside the flat footage just as a kind of reference for what a normal contrasty image looks like. And that was definitely helpful for this shot. I just grabbed my contrasty test frame and that made me realize that I definitely wanted something that looked more like that. So I increased the contrast and dropped the film color down until the skin tones were roughly in the right place and then I headed over to the color wheel to add the rest of the contrast. I'm starting by boosting the highlights and then dropping the mids a little bit before finally tackling the shadows. Again, we're getting them just on that zero line on the waveform, but then it looks a bit too dark compared to the white outline. So let's go back to the mids and bring them up a little bit, much better. Next, I'll do my standard saturation trick. And now comparing the two, there's no longer such a big difference in brightness and contrast but it is looking a bit too red. So let's grab our black mask from before and use the white wall to set the color temperature until it's neutral right in the middle. And then we can move it over to do the same thing with the skin tones, just bringing the highlights until they sit right on that line. Now the paint in that background must not have been perfectly white because now it looks too green. And so what ends up happening is that we have to go back and forth, adding a bit of red or green to the highs and the mids and just keep checking the vector scopes until we have some kind of compromise between the red skin and the green walls. Eventually after going back and forth a few times, I ran out of time. And there we go. Now you may have noticed a kind of theme with all three of those shots. I was kind of focusing on consistency and accuracy because I used to be really into the creative implications of a certain color grading style. But after watching my favorite films, I've kind of noticed that color grading is usually a really light touch rather than going full teal and orange or, or dropping the saturation every time there's a slightly sad scene. Things like accuracy and consistency don't seem particularly creative or artistic, but I think it's actually really important because it's about keeping the audience immersed. I don't want the color to be like that guy in the band who insists on playing way louder than everyone else just to get themselves hurt. Of course, there are exceptions to that. And if you wanna do something really extreme with the color, then that's great. But the place that I'm personally at right now is that less is more. So that video was sponsored by Film Convert, the plugin that I used throughout the video and that I've been using for years beforehand. 
If you're interested, you can get it from the top link in the description. They're having a big sale on at the moment, 30% off, and using that link also earns me a small commission to support these videos. All right, see you next week.